Issue 3 We are not like our parents. Many teens feel that their parents don't understand them. It is as though their parents are from a different world. This is a normal reaction due to the generation gap between teens and their parents. Parents tend to be conservative in their child-rearing philosophy. They are under a lot of financial and social pressure to succeed, and they don't have enough time or energy to devote themselves exclusively to taking care of their children. They probably remember experiencing many of the same problems their kids are going through, but they also recall how naive they were at that age. Of course, they also hope their progeny can avoid some of the mistakes that the parents made. One of the few guides they have is remembering the way adults, especially their own parents, responded to them when they were young, so they tend to act the same way. This is how families have been raised for millennia. Kids, however, have not lived through any earlier time. They don't have a large backlog of experiences. Everything is relatively new to them and full of possibilities. Some people look at the world and ask, why? But I look at it and ask, why not? Is likely to be a dominating attitude. They are unsympathetic to their parents' apparent apathy. They know the world is full of hypocrisy and unfairness, and they strongly believe that they can change it. This is how human society makes progress, though it is far slower and less complete than the young want. What happens, of course, is that the young, impatient and maybe radical as they are, eventually grow up, get a job, and start a family, and the cycle begins anew. Before they know it, they are the hidebound conservatives they had despised in their youth, and the children they conceive are the ones with the time, energy, and vision needed to try to create a new society. What does it mean? 1. Parents tend to be conservative in their child-rearing philosophy. 2. Some people look at the world and ask why, but I look at it and ask why not. 3. They are the hidebound conservatives they had despised in their youth. Comprehension 1. How do parents learn how to raise their children? Are there any other ways not mentioned in the text? 2. Why are the young so impatient with how members of the older generations do things? 3. Who are right, the parents or the children? Teen Talk One, do you think your parents understand you and vice versa? Two, what can we learn from our parents? Three, what can we learn better from our friends? Four, when do you feel most strongly that you are not like your parents? Five, on what issues do you strongly agree with your parents? 6. How will you raise your kids in the future? 7. What is your definition of a successful life? If it is different from your parents, say how. More Talking Points I agree or disagree with my parents on the subject of 1. Saving money 2. Having a boyfriend or girlfriend 3. Fashions 4. Curfew 5. Going to college and getting a diploma 6. Owning a car 
Seven. Job selection. Eight. Spending time on the computer. Nine. Music. Ten. Marriage. Opinion samples. One. Everyone says that I am just like my father, except shorter. But I don't see how that can be true. First of all, we don't look alike. Though I must admit that when I look at his old photos, I can see a strong resemblance. So maybe when I grow up, I will look like him. I hope so because I think he is a very handsome man. But right now, we're not the same. Second, he hates my music, my clothes, and my friends. But my grandpa tells me that he and my dad had the same fights when my dad was growing up. Finally, we don't act the same in any way that I can tell. Whenever I do something, I get very tired of relatives chuckling at my behavior and saying something like, "The nut doesn't fall very far from the tree." Questions. One. Do you think you strongly resemble one of your parents, neither of them, or some composite of them both? Explain your answer. Two. Which of your parents are you closer to emotionally, your mother or your father? Why do you think so? Three. What does the proverb at the end of the paragraph mean? In your case, how far has the nut fallen? Two. I hope that I won't ever become as serious as my parents. They never seem to have any fun in life. They can never relax and enjoy what we have. On vacation, they can't just chill out. They feel that they have to accomplish something, to the point where they get more tired than when they are at work. At home, there is always one more thing that needs to be done, no matter how much has already been finished. In their dealings with me. Everything has to be presented in the guise of a moral lesson. On the few times that they join in some social occasion, they can't seem genuinely to enjoy themselves. Instead, they feel compelled to eat and drink too much, as though they are compensating too hard for all the fun they are missing on a regular basis. I know that responsibility and self-discipline are important qualities, but even things which are good and necessary can be taken to bad, unneeded lengths. Questions. One. What advice would you give the writer of the paragraph above? Two. What advice would you give to his parents? Three. Moderation in all things, including moderation itself, may be a sensible goal, but how does one achieve it? Dialogue. Have fun, dear. I will, Mom. Don't worry. And make sure you're home before ten o'clock. That's not fair. You told me to have fun, and then you said you want me to come home early. If there isn't anything fun to do before ten, then I guess you should just stay home. No way. My friends are waiting for me. And they probably all have a curfew too. No, I'm the only one, except Ralph. But his curfew is at midnight. Then I think your friends have terribly permissive parents. You're too young to be out late at night. Sometimes I think even ten is too late. And I think my friends' parents trust their judgment and maturity, so they let them make up their own minds. I trust your maturity too, but within the limits of your age. You aren't an adult yet. I'll never be an adult if you keep treating me like a child. I'm not treating you like a child. I'm treating you like someone your age. If you were a child, I wouldn't let you go out on your own at all. And when you get older, I'll let you have more freedom. But not till then. But it's not fair. Fair or not, that's the way it is. You have to be home by ten. Are you going to waste your time arguing with me, or are you going to spend it with your friends? I'm going. Okay. Have fun.
Questions. One. Why does Brandon think his mother is being unfair? Two. What reasons does she give for her curfew? Three. In your case, what do you think a reasonable curfew would be, or do you think any curfew at all is unreasonable? Justify your answer. Read and discuss. Not too much praise, please. If you want children to grow up into the best possible versions of themselves, it's crucial to replace damaging words in your vocabulary with alternatives that help build character. Some of the things parents say to kids seem harmless or even constructive on the surface, but experts say they may hurt more than help. For example, for years we've been told that boosting a child's self-esteem is important to his or her success in life, but child experts are now learning that too much praise can backfire. Praiseaholic tykes who expect compliments at every turn may become teens who seek the same kind of approval from their friends who offer them a cigarette or an alcoholic drink. The implication of saying "You're the prettiest girl in class" is that you love her only because she is beautiful. Talking about the goal she achieved, but not her overall effort, indicates that you care only about her accomplishments, not her overall effort. And this attitude carries over into the classroom. At Columbia University in New York, social psychologist Carol Dweek tested the effects of overpraise on 400 fifth graders. She found that kids who were praised for trying hard did better on tests and were more likely to take on difficult assignments than those lauded for being smart. Praising attributes or abilities makes a false promise that success will come to you because you have that trait, and it devalues effort. So children are afraid to take on challenges, says Dweek. They figured they'd better quit while they're ahead. Questions. One. When do your parents praise you? When do they nag you? Two. Which do you think motivates you more, compliments or complaints? Three. Do you like the challenge of learning new things, or do you prefer to improve on skills you've already acquired? Four. Have you tried to do something new recently? In your opinion, to what degree did you master it? Five. What have you failed at? Why? Pictures talk. One. Questions. One. Have you ever thought about the responsibilities your parents have? Talk about the burdens your dad and mom have. Two. Your parents probably sacrifice a lot of things in behalf of your welfare. Do you appreciate it, or do you think they are just doing their duty, and so you have nothing to thank them for? Three. Do you think being a good parent is easy? Why or why not? What about becoming a good kid? Is that easy? Two. Questions. One. Score your parents' current lifestyle. Two. What are the things you would want to coach your parents about in order for them to have a better life? Three. Do you think your lifestyle is closely related to that of your parents, or are they basically separate with little to do with each other? What's your advice? One. I have met my soulmate. She is a real loving sweetheart, my first and only love. We have many things in common. We're very happy when we're together, and I wish we were able to spend even more time in each other's company. I'm definitely going to marry her when I'm grown up. 
But the problem is my parents. They say I should forget her. Now is the time to focus on studying. They insist that it's not real love, just an adolescent crush. Real love will come later, they say, after I finish school and get a good job. At that point, they say, I will find an even better wife. I know how I feel, even though I respect my parents' judgment on most things. Should I follow their advice or should I follow my heart? 2. I'm just an average student with okay grades, not spectacular ones. But I'm happy because I am very outgoing and have many friends. These days, I volunteer to help handicapped people. I feed them and bathe them, and they look very happy that someone is taking care of them. And taking care of them makes me happy too. I think I want to be a nurse when I become an adult. But my parents say that it's a very tiring job, and it doesn't pay very well either. So I should prepare for my real future, whatever that is. I don't understand their point, since I'm happy with my decision and think it would be a very fulfilling life for someone like me. Do you think I should try to convince my parents they are wrong, or should I listen to them or do something else? Help!